presence of the Almighty God. We are going to have three very interesting evenings this week. As I've always said, the greatest knowledge you can have is the knowledge of God Almighty. And so these three beautiful days or evenings are going to be evenings for us are to glean knowledge of God, knowledge of God. Paul cried that I may know him, knowledge of the God that has saved us, knowledge of the God that we follow. Jesus asked his disciples, who do the people say I am? What are they saying about me? And they began to give different versions of what people said about him. God doesn't want you to say what people are saying about him. He's bigger than what people say. God wants you to know him. And in you knowing God, God wants that to influence the way you do things. As I've said several times, don't budget according to the dream you have. Budget according to the size of God that has been revealed to you. Don't do things like your tribes people do things. Do things in direct proportion to the knowledge of God that you have. And these three days, we are going to look at the speed aspect of the God we serve. How fast can God be? Can we measure the speed of God? Which vehicle can we use in our current time when we try to look at how fast God can be? What vessel, what plane can we use if we want to find out how fast God can be? What kind of instrument can we use to measure how fast God can be? Because if you have a revelation of how fast God can be, it will control your expectation from God. There are statements that believers keep on making that are nothing but revelations of the fact that they do not know God very well. And I will touch on a few of those statements. There are things we say that reveal how we see God. There's a way we live that reveal how we see God. There's a way some of us budget that is nothing but just a revelation of how we see God. But there is how you will live your life when you catch a revelation of how fast God can be. Matthew chapter 14. Raise your hands and say, God is really, really fast. I didn't hear you say it again. God is really, really fast. God is faster than I imagined. I didn't hear you say it. God is faster than I thought. God is faster than I imagined. God will do it faster than I thought. Now, that is an aspect of God. That is an aspect of God. Believers are slowly beginning to look at God as worldly doctors. That's why we are coming in with things like, man of God, I saw you on Monday, but can I come again on Wednesday? Something has just come up. And then you come on Wednesday and say, let me give you an appointment for next week. Sounds pastoral, but it's not biblical. There are many pastoral things pastors do that are not biblical. I want you to know God. I want you to have an encounter with the raw God. God that is not edited.
Raise your hands and say, Lord, may I know you without any editing. I don't like the way God has been edited nowadays. A God that has been repaired. Not only repaired, some people have even painted him. May you have an experience with the real God. The God of the Bible. Matthew 14. <laughs> the more Paul walked with him, the more Paul desired to know him. Say that I may know him. Look at this. Can you, can you, can you just go down? Then he got into the boat to get somewhere by himself. But the multitude saw him and rain there ahead of him. So get to that verse. Then I begin to read. May you experience a God that is not edited. I don't like your amen. Please, if you have a problem with saying amen, don't come for the service. Because amen means let it be so. Let's read together. Please quickly go to the verse. Then he got into the boat. They were going to a, dis a, a place by themselves. But the multitude saw them and ran there ahead of them. I do believe it's Matthew 14. And when he got out of the boat... He was moved with compassion. Did you get it? 22. Verse 22. Yes. Don't take out verse 1 when what we need is in 22. We don't have that time. Look at this. Are we together? Look at it. Put your eyes on it. This is a training school for God. It's not a pampering office of a pastor and a member. So that a member doesn't leave church. Because if I'm not changing your life, there's no need to keep you here. Hallelujah. <laughs> that, that does sound pastoral, no. There's a difference between a man of God and a pastor. They're not the same. Look at this. So immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he sent the multitude away. Verse number 23. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. Are we sure we are in the right track? Let's try. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea by the waves. Uh, for the wind was contrary. Are you sure we are in the right place? Let's try. Now in the fourth watch of the night, I don't think we are in the right, we are going the right direction. Okay, Pastor Simon, leave that. It, it looks a good story, but quickly go to. Then he made them sit down and took the bread from them. He commanded them to sit down, then took the bread from them and blessed and broke it and distributed it. Let's make our work easy. Let's leave all this. You can leave, read that in your devotional time. Good. Which verse is that? Okay, let's try to work with this. Did you get it? If you are going to be in this class, you must be very fast with your Bible. Hallelujah. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. Good. Now I think we are in the right track now. Leave that one. So he healed the sick out of compassion. Now when it was evening, somebody said it was evening. His disciples came to him saying, This place is deserted and the hour is already late. Send the multitude away that they may go into the village and buy themselves food. They sounded compassionate. Those were pastors. Concerned about the members. The members are hungry. 
You know, if you are not careful, it is a pastor that will stop you from knowing God. Sometimes the sympathy of a pastor becomes the roadblock to you knowing God. There are things a pastor is supposed to take you through so that you can know God. But in the fear of losing sadaka and losing members and having empty seats, many are afraid to teach people to experience God. The worst people you'll have in your life are people that want to shield you from experiences that are meant to help you know God. These are pastors. Let's read verse, verse. I don't criticize. I'm a pastor. So when I say pastors, we are all there. Now look at this. So when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is late. Raise my mic a little bit. And the hour is already late. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. Sounds very compassionate. Oh. What an understanding man of God who feels the hunger of the people and can look at the time and the clock and feels it is late. Send them to go and buy food. What a wonderful pastor. But sometimes compassion can be hindrance. Look at this. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You are trying to send them away from an experience that they need. Do not need. They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. You are trying to run away from your responsibility. And they say to him, we have here only, somebody say only, we have here only five loaves and two fish. Somebody say only, five loaves and two fish. He said, back to verse 17. Okay, verse 18, verse 18, verse 18. He said, bring them here to me. Now, I want you to begin to mark a few things. Then he commanded, somebody say he commanded. The multitudes to sit down on the green grass. Then he took, write the word commanded. Then he took, I hope you're writing. He commanded, then he took the um, five loaves and the two fish. And um, looking up to heaven, that's number three. He blessed them, that's number four. And broke and gave at the loaves to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. The next verse. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men. Women, children were not counted. Besides of course, the scripture explains, besides women and children, the men were 5,000. Immediately, Jesus, when he was done, made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he sent, he allowed the disciples go so that he can go sit them with the members. That's for another time. I'll tell you what he told the congregation while the disciples went ahead. Sometimes God wants to spend time with people away from pastors. Let's leave that. Somebody said that if heaven was by virtue of works, the least number of people that may not make it there are pastors. Just that heaven is not by virtue of works. I wish one time I'll take time and teach for a month on the subject of heaven. Pastor, can a man lose his salvation? Pastor, can a Christian die and go to hell? Do you ever ask such kind of questions? Now, these are the, this is what I want you to emphasize. Verse number 19. Put verse 19 there again. And let's read it loud. One, two, three, together. Verse 19. Okay, one, two, three, go. Somebody say commanded number one. I can't hear you. Say commanded number one. So then he commanded. This is what we are go I'm going to teach you. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. 
and he took. Say, commanded. Say, he took. Okay. Then look to heaven. Say, look to heaven. Blessed. Say, blessed. Broke. Say, broke. And gave the loss to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. The question I want to ask is, how long did that take? Anybody that has an answer? How long did that take? Try to do calculation. Try to Google, try to research. How long did that take? Tell your neighbor, God is fast. I didn't hear you again. Tell him, God is very fast. So, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things we need to look at during these three days, uh, because there are a number of things we have been told about God. And I, um, I really would want you to have a personal experience with God, a personal knowledge of God. I don't want you to rely much on what men have said about God. What men have said about God is what they saw about God. But as you walk with God, you are a child of God. You are not a grandchild of God. God wants you to also see what you can see. And when you look at God as you walk with him, there are statements you hear believers making that simply reveal the fact that they don't know God. Statements like, Pastor, pray for me in the next two years. I know I will be very rich. Faith is not in the next two years. Now faith is. There's no scripture that says Jesus Christ was. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Even if you want to talk about him in yesterday, it has to be is. God is in the present. God is love. Not God will be. God is love. Everything about him is. But in our fear to express God, we postpone him. We make statements like, give me five years from now. You will know my God. Why do we need five years to know your God? Does it mean your God is growing? Does it mean your God is still a toddler? Does it mean your God is in the clinic? Does it mean your God has gone to the market? He'll come back after five years? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the fire is there. They are here. The fire has been heated seven times. The king is here. They are here. They are binding them and they are saying the God we serve is able to deliver us. They didn't say will. They said is. There are statements you need to be delivered from tonight. Pastor, I'm believing God that by Sunday the Lord will have healed my mother. Pastor, my mother is supposed to, to travel, let me use that, but I'm believing God, just pray, then I'm believing God that by Sunday, because she's traveling on Monday, so I'm believing God that by Sunday, God will have healed my mother. It is wrong. God either has done it or is doing it. God will not do it. Put it there by his stripes. Peter speaking. Say, by his stripes. We are, not will, are healed. It is my prayer for you that you will not postpone God. I don't like your amen. It is my prayer for you that you will not postpone what God wants to do. 
It is my prayer for you that you will catch a revelation of the speed of God. The speed dimension of God. Then, pastor, why did Abraham wait? The scripture says something powerful. Then Abraham believed. That's where his waiting ended. You will wait on the Lord till you believe. You know what you are waiting? You are not waiting to be married. You are waiting to believe. So stop saying I'm believing God. No, you are not believing God. You are waiting to believe. Because when you believe, that's where it happens. But pastor, it took Abraham so long. I don't care how long it will take. Oh man of God, I know one day God is preparing. God is not preparing anything. You wait till you believe. And when you believe, Kwisha, you may not see it physically, but it happens the day you believe. Look at this. Shout again. I will not postpone this God. Ah, I will not. I will not. I will not forward God. Mm -mm, I will not postpone God. That man of God, I'm waiting. If there will be a miracle service, anointing service, then, 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 Kuhara Itatoka. No, it will not going to live. You are not waiting for a miracle service. You are waiting. To, you, you are waiting to believe. I'm trying to, you know, black man with mouth that has eaten vegetables, I'm trying to shift your thinking so that you can fit in this thing God wants to do. Because if you're not flowing with him, you will not see the acts of his hand. I want you in the river of God. Look at this. Now, Isaiah is writing before Jesus is born. And Isaiah says, now unto us, I wish you start there. Then we come to 53 verse 5. Unto us, a child is born. Isaiah doesn't say, unto us, a child. He's prophesying thousands of years before Mary conceives Jesus. Because God has never been willing. God is. Look at this. This is Isaiah. Chapter 9 verse 6. Can we flow together? Is there anybody in a wheelchair? I, I, do you have anything I can use as an example? God will not. God is. He's not going. God will not give you money. God has either given you money or God is giving you money. I don't like your amen. I'm trying to get you into the river of God. I'm trying to get you to flow with God. Look at this. Now listen. Isaiah is writing thousands of years before Jesus is born. But there is one thing Isaiah knows. Jesus did not die when Mary conceived him and he walked down the earth and he went to Calvary. Jesus died before Mary was born. Because God doesn't deal with will. God deals with has and is. Are you getting it? Okay. If you have a problem with that, he is the lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the earth was laid. This earth is on the foundation of the blood of Jesus. He died before Mary was born. Because God doesn't deal with will. God deals with is or has. You'll get that. So don't postpone God. Watch a kwairisha moon. That I'm waiting on God. One day, there's nothing like that. You are waiting to believe. Because when you believe, the day you believe, you don't say, Pastor, now I believe. Mm -mm. Believing is 
so powerful that when it happens, something changes. Leave that. Let's go back to and to ask a child. Somebody say is. I didn't hear you say again is. So God has never dealt with wars. Look at Isaiah. For unto us a child. Now I want you to say that with a swag. And to us a child. And yet Isaiah is speaking thousands of years before Jesus is born. Because if you can bring into now what you are expecting. The woman with the issue of blood went to many doctors expecting the healing to come one day. He went to this clinic expecting that after treatment, after some time, she will see results and nothing happened. But the day she saw Jesus and decreed the healing Based on there and then. She said, when I touch, not after, the moment I'm going to touch, the hem of his garment, it is going to happen. She never said that of any doctor. That the moment I'll walk into that hospital, I'm going to be made well. And so she went into one hospital after another and nothing happened. But that day, she said, all I need is the hem of his garment. And when I touch, there and there. You know what? When she touched, there and there. Don't postpone God. There's nothing like I'm waiting. You are waiting to believe. And that's why Jesus a number of times told them, if only you can believe. Because that is the weakness of God. For unto us, a child is born. And to us, a son, not will, is given. The government will, but the child is. His name will, but the child is. All those other things can be will, but the child is. I don't know if I can bring into the nowness of God. So that you don't leave this place saying, man of God, I'm believing for the loan to be cancelled. You know, you know, those who know it happens as I'm speaking. Wherever you are listening, something is not going to happen. Something is happening right now. You, you don't never deal with God. By postponing God, always ensure that God is Shakada. Now faith is. This is something you hear and still say, man of God, pray for me. Like in the next five years, we'll organize a wedding. You've left God out. Now, i give you another one. Then Peter later on comes to speak of the same. And this is what Peter says. By his stripes ye were. Now, now, Isaiah also said the thing, the same thing. But Peter, Peter, Peter also says the same thing that by his stripes, Peter is not saying you are being healed now. It's already done. You are healed. So our warfare is not to create something new. Our warfare is to make real what is already real. We are not the broke trying to be rich. We are the rich that Satan has taken advantage of. That is bringing to reality what Calvary will not repeat itself. We just want to take advantage of what Jesus... I don't know who I came to talk to today. Raise your hands and say, I refuse to postpone my God. It is happening to me right now. But the power of the Holy Ghost, that God doesn't need another 1,000 years to bless your life. God doesn't need another 10 years to give you a husband. in the now. God. God is not will. God is. So man of God, I'm just waiting on God kind of that God will do something for me. No, you are waiting to believe. Look at Peter speaking. Read it. Oh, I 
promise not to take any more time than this. L look at it. Somebody say is. Stop going around telling people, my God will punish you. You allow the robbers to do to you whatever they want to do to you, then after they have gone with the phones and everything and all the money and all the bag, they say, <laughs> my God will punish them. You are an embarrassment to heaven. The challenge God has is there are few men that are ready to dare the reality of God because it is risky to dare the reality of God. You are too careful to experience God. You are too afraid. There's always this thing about God that you have to risk something. When a pistol is on your head, and you can tell the difference between a toy and a real pistol. And they shoot somebody that is next to you. And it is your turn. And you know it is loaded. And you can think of your children at home. And the things you have not fulfilled. And you know if you mess up they will shoot. That's the time to dare the power of God. The power of God will never be dared in safety. The reason many believers cannot experience God is because many believers love it the way it is. That's why not many of you, Jesus already made you rich on the cross, but not many of you may live to see hundreds of millions. Because there are many, many expensive, expensive tests you have to put your God to and see exactly how real God can be. So long as you are playing safe, you'll never know him. God is never known in the safe waters. Peter stepped on the water. Many believers are praying about to step on the water. Jehovah, shakata, shakata, kata. The water is there. He the God of Moris He He mugu, baba. And heaven is saying, Dare the water. Dare the water. God was not joking with Moses with a toy snake. It was a real snake. He told Moses, what do you have in your hands? He said, Rod. He said, drop it. He dropped it. Turned into a snake. God said, hold it by the tail. It is safer to hold the snake at the back of the neck, not the tail. God said, I want to throw you into danger so that you can have an experience that can make you stand before Pharaoh. Let me tell you, the things I'm preaching to you, I have experienced them. God is not taught. God is caught. If you have not dared God, you have nothing to tell men. Dare God! Look at this. So that is many believers. This is the water. He, he, Jehovah Makadesh. Now, now you, have, you, have, you have left your rent. You have run to Jehovah Makadesh. You have left the issue of the husband. When God was putting something in your heart that prepare a pre-wedding without knowing the man. You thought about it. Then you left Yasha Makadesh. You see, you have left the real thing. <laughs> you have run to Makadesh. <laughs> this man has dared God on a number of dangerous occasions. This man. You wouldn't be listening to me if I was giving you a story. Peter said, Lord, if it is you. The statement of Peter was a statement of fear. Let me also come. Jesus did not give him a formula on the 17, the, the 17 marine steps on how to walk on water. Jesus did not tell him 
the 21 scriptures you need to quote before you walk on water. Jesus did not tell him, quote the way Noah's ark was going up as you, as you confess, as you confess. As you co Jesus said none of that. He said, the way to walk on water, come. Thank God for Peter's illiteracy. There's a level of illiteracy you need to experience God. Peter stepped on the water and began to walk on the water. When he began to look down, the moment it became real to him, it was water. That's it. He began to sink. Come. Put this again in the book of Joshua. Then I come back to this. As soon as the feet of the priest that bore the ark of the covenant stepped on the water, the, Jordan, the, the, the water parted this way and that way, but they had to step on the water. There is something you fear doing that is caging the totality of God in your life. The day you do it, that's it. Let me repeat this dangerous statement. You will never know God in the safe waters. God is never known in the safe waters. Knowing God is a risky affair. The God we serve is. And fire is. <laughs> Dear believers live a lot of fire. Just rent. <laughs> Daring God. The God we serve is. The God we serve is. Till you get to a place, a landlord calls you. You know you are rares. You know you are not going to work. And you don't want to change the promise you gave him. And you want to test if God is real. And he's saying he's coming. And you tell him, just come. I also want to discuss with you the issue of the tap. Because as for the, water, the, 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 the rent, and I told you I'm paying you two more months in advance. The rent is ready, but you have to come. So that I can show you one or two things you need to correct. And you know, and he told you, this time I'm not joking. I'm coming with my boys. So that it, should you fail, because we have been on this story for long. So whether you tell me you have it, I don't believe it until I see it. You tell him, come sir, come. If that looks like madness to you, stop walking with God. Because God doesn't walk with normal people. I went into a seven days fasting and prayer in high school. I had arrears from form two to form four. And the Lord spoke to me. Rise up, leave your father's compound. They said, this teacher, go carry your things. Go to his house. And live with him. He will pay you a school fees. And I packed my, my, my box and my parents asked me, where are you going? I said, I'm going to teach her. A, the name begins with A's house. I said, oh, that's good. You've talked to him. I said, I've talked to him. Because if God tells me to go, God has talked to him. If God tells Elijah, arise, go to the widow in Zarephath, God must have spoken to the widow. How did the widow know Elijah is a man of God? I said, oh, man of God. How did she know? God spoke to her. So I bundled my box. The teacher was still in school. By 3 p.m. I arrived. The guy living in his house, maybe I don't know, was like working for him. I'll make the story very, very short. Working for him, looked at me with my box. And he didn't know how to question me. I told him, open the door. He opened the door and he's still looking at me and said, I told him, hold the box, help me to put it inside. So I put it inside. I told him, is it going to stay here? Show me the room where it will be kept. He said, hey, sir, but uh, the, uh, uh, which room did you agree with the teacher you will stay in? I said, you show me the room. I put the box in and prayed for an hour. The, actually, the teacher came back while I was praying. We had no arrangements. He only saw me in school in the Christian Union. We have not talked anything. I've traced him to his house with my box. 
I finished prayer. I came out. Now people are supposed to eat supper. I say, how is everyone? He said, we are well. He said, you are welcome. You, as I said, no, I'm fasting and praying. I'm not eating. He said, okay. I sat down. They were looking at me. It was strange. He didn't know the question to ask me. I wish one day I'll call him. We are celebrating 12 years. King's gathering 12 years. I promised to call him to come. So he looked at me. He didn't know what to ask me. He pondered over it the whole night. In the morning he left for school. Because at the rares I didn't go to school. I stayed in his, in his house. Reading my books. While he went to school. He came back. I was in prayer. I always ensured just before he comes back I'm in prayer. Again I didn't eat. In the morning he left while I'm in prayer. After he goes, I read. God told me go and stay there. Not go and talk to him. And I'm not telling you as a, as a woman to leave your house and, <laughs> and go to a man's house and say, I'm just, I'm just trying to do what Pastor Lo did. No, this has to be your personal conviction. After staying there for one week, he told me, hey, we need to talk uh, you don't go to school. What is the problem? I told him, what do you think? He said, um, I don't know, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. Because it's not good to be staying back while people are going to school. And that man sold his father's land, his own land. Raised the money and paid the school fees. Because I heard God say, go and live with him. He will pay your fee. Walking with God requires a certain level of madness. You will die in this your one day. Hey, one day, tuendele tu na ibada. Kuna siku mungu anatembeaga. Mungu atembeaga siku ingine. Kuna siku mungu atatembea. If God does not come now, sometimes I tell people like a joke, if he can't touch you through the airwaves, chances that even if you come, you'll get nothing are very high. Can you dare God? The proof that you believe God is daring God. And not daring God with, if it fails, then you are not God. What are you, Toto? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, even if it does not, even if I try and it fails, it doesn't change me from trying another. You want to walk in the supernatural? Make mistakes. Make dangerous mistakes on the pulpit. In my hunger to see a man walk out of the wheelchair, I broke a man's leg in the service. Instead of him getting healed, I broke his leg. The brother was crying. Eh, eh. The, the whole church was scared. It wasn't a miracle. I was hurting him. Nilikuwa na vuruta kuna power. Nilikuwa kanza kupiga ndu. Nika muambia you are either going to be healed or you are going to die. Unathania injili ni kusimama kwa pulpit na kusema basi kama unasikia ni kama umepona kuja kama baru ya pona ngojea. Mungu wa tumiangi upumbavu kama hiyo. Mungu wa natumia walio vuta bangi ya kiro. Mungu wa natumia majambazi wa kiro. Mungu wa natumia spiritual bad boys. You need to be bad enough to commit God to work. So while the service was about to end, I thought God will heal him. God has not healed him. So I told everybody, lift up your hands, let's, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, so that I can escape to the hotel. The host bishop came to the hotel. He said, man of God, you know, I've traveled. This is not to lose respect for you, but if you don't have some things, it doesn't hurt to just leave what you don't have. Many of you are not aware that I'm a miracle man. So, he told me, you see, this kind of a thing you have, if you do this in America, you'll be arrested. It is bad. It is wrong what you did. I was getting angry. 
please just preach. You are a good preacher. Leave, leave miracles alone. The shame you have caused to that family. I don't even know if people will come for revival tomorrow. It was embarrassing. You have had that brother, they have run to the hospital. I couldn't eat supper. The man took away my peace. I paced the floor. I told God, what is this? They took him to the hospital. They dressed the, the, the leg in the following service. In fact, that day, they now put him in the first row. I could see the leg had the fresh bandage. I was ashamed. The place was jam-packed. The place was more packed than yesterday. And as I was preaching, people are not saying amen that they believe. Every time they say the amen, their eyes are on the brother. If you hear people say, I feel the power of God, I felt nothing that I was dry. The moment I saw that brother, all my prayer the whole day disappeared. The family members were not saying amen. Amens were few, but the place was packed. I could tell my faith was being dead. But listen, God defends madmen. I preached, I preached, I preached, I preached. I prolonged the preaching. I preached, I preached. I tried to make people laugh so that the place can, the, 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 the place cannot. But as they are laughing, they are looking at the brother if he's getting healed. Then paradventures, I was still preaching. A wind moved at the back. Some people began to be delivered. Then I now went back to the pulpit. I said, God is here. Not that I felt him. Not that I knew he was going to come. I said, God is here. I told you people, God is going to come tonight. God is here. I stopped preaching. So my statement was, God is here. God is here. The power of God began to fall. The brother fell off the wheelchair. The anointing slew him. I didn't want to touch him. When I saw him go down, I said, ha, ah, something must be happening. The wife went down. In that row, people began to go down. I took ushers to be victims. I said, can I have three ushers come very quickly? I was very careful now. I said, hold him. Pull him up. I was at the pulpit. I said, lift him up. Lift him. Lift him. Brother, it is your day. Power. He went. I punished him. Pick him up again. Not that the Lord told me to do that. Pick him. Power. He, the seventh time. I said, the Lord is saying seven times. I didn't hear the Lord say seven times. The Lord is saying seven. The seventh time, he went down, rolled on the floor, picked himself up. My brother, the place went wild. God honored me breaking his leg. You want God to use you. You must be mad enough. There is this madness that must enter your spirit to commit God in the now. Don't pray for them and leave them on the wheelchair. Whoever doesn't want to leave the wheelchair, pull them with the wheelchair. Throw them out of the service so that you can see the God of the Bible. Can I hear somebody say amen in this place? Commit God now. Faith is. But this is the message for tonight. I'm introducing three days. How fast is God? Sijakuito kuje maombi, ni kuombe. I have seen miracles upon miracles because of daring God. They brought a man into my crusade the man was as good as dead. I was dating mama. Mama will remember that miracle. I was dating mama. The man was as good as dead. Worms were walking in his body. Like a kanyaka chinivi. Pass and blood. I could see even the ministers of God on the pulpit, their faith. The, the, people, the people that will kill your faith faster than anybody else are pastors. I looked at the ministers. They were dead. They pulled him out of the car. The, whole, the smell of the whole place changed. He was smelling. I put my hand on that leg. A skin, blood and pus remained in my hands. Say, so put him down. Let him walk. You want a stone to walk. The man is as good as dead. Mama left me there and went behind the podium and said, Lord, give him wisdom. Give him wisdom. Lord, give him wisdom. Oh no, not like this. You can't raise the, the dead. 
have not fainted. They are dead. The dead have no faith. Mtatoka kwa hii maubiri ya nibile hau kwa naimani. We have been sent to raise the dead. The dead have no faith. The dead has not fainted. You have not seen a dead man in a service. I have seen. Do you know why it is easy for me to believe God for millions? Because of the spiritual realities I've seen. As they were bundling him out of the crusades, he was as good as dead. There's nothing God did there. I told them tomorrow we are going to hear this man's testimony. There were no claps in the crowd. The question mark was, but but while they were walking him to the car, a child that was born, that has never walked, has never talked, that was five years old, when the mother saw that, the child spoke in the crusade, said, Mama, put me down for the first time. And the baby dropped down and began to run. The following day, we had 10 stadium crusades before the pandemic. There will be 20 now. My place is not in the congregation. My place is out there. Because you have had so much preaching, you are dead. That's why nothing is happening in your life. At least the dead cannot oppose the message. That's why they rise. They don't reason, they only rise. This is the faith that buys my cars. This is the faith that buys my house. This is the faith that ensures I don't lack money. This is the faith that commits God in my everyday life. This is the faith that gathers you here. I may not know the totality of God, but I know God. How fast is God? Take a dead man to the doctor. Ask the doctor, how long will it take for you to resurrect him? They say you are mad. Somebody say God. Say it again, God. I didn't hear you. Say it again, God. Shout it, God is. God is healing my body. God is. God is supplying all my need. God is. God is opening that door. Not he will. God is opening that door. God is. I'm building that project. I'm finishing it. God is. God is supplying now. Now faith is. God is. I commit God. In these three days, you will see the speed of God in your life. I didn't come to preach to you the delays of God. I came to preach to you the speed of God. You will see God in these three days. He will do much more than you have ever expected in your life. Raise your hands and say, that is my God. God is. God is. God is. So when we talk about the speed of God, you have the story at the back of your mind. We talk about how quick God can be. Tell your neighbor, God is quick. <laughs> how quick God can be. We are talking about how rapid God can be. We serve a rapid God. We're talking about how long it takes God to change a situation. It didn't take God 25 years to give Abraham a son. God gave Abraham a son when Abraham believed. The 25 years, Sarah and Abraham were waiting to believe. I want to ask you a question. How long does it take God to turn things around? We are talking about how fast God is. Four things I want you to write from this story. Number one, the place was deserted. There were no people. Because when God wants to move a number of times, he gets out of the way everything that your hope is in. 
God will break your crutches so that you can walk. So the miracle was not done where human help can easily be accessed. The place was deserted. Sazingine mungu akitaku kuinua na kisho na ajwa. So the place was a deserted place. Is there anybody dealing with the desert here? A dry place? No clients? Kumekauka? Kwambia hai ya kuna? Deserted place. <laughs> Not even Facebook inbox. Pako na jangaliaga kwa kio na jangalia hivi. There must be a veil like pastor said. The place was deserted, left by men. No human activity. Because the human activity may give glory to man. So the place was deserted. Four things I want you to note. The place is a desert. Because God has a way of getting you away from the crowd of men to reveal himself to you. So the place is deserted. Number two, if you are writing, Oh Lord, help me finish this. Number two, the hour is late. In other words, we are operating past the accepted time. We are past the accepted time. Men have their time. God does not a number of times fit in the time of men. So the hour is late. According to man, it is late. According to man, it is not the correct time. Stop preaching and when my time will come, mm -mm, it will not come. The time is past the acceptable. And ladies and gentlemen, when you are past the acceptable time, the only thing that can do it is divine speed. Natural speed cannot do it. The disciples were trying to tell Jesus, we are already behind schedule. We are already outside the right time of man. According to men, it is already late. We are outside the calendar of man. Anything in your life as I'm speaking, that it's outside the calendar of man. It's not outside the calendar of God. A number of times, the calendar of a man does not agree with the calendar of God. A number of times. A number of times, God reveals himself when the calendar of man is already, can no longer allow the thing. The hour is late. If you've never operated behind schedule, that's why you've never seen the speed of God. So they are behind schedule. They were telling Jesus that, Lord, you need to understand <laughs> we are at an advanced stage of life. Genesis 18 verse 11. God wants to show how fast he can do his things. The New King James Version. He waits till Abraham and Sarah. Look at this. Now Abraham and Sarah were old. Well advanced in age. And Sarah had passed the age. Because God doesn't deal with the time of man. God deals with difficult matters. God does not deal with easy things. So it's very hard for you to experience God when things are easy. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old. Somebody say old. Were old. Well advanced in age. They were not just old. They were well advanced. In age. And Sarah had passed the age of getting children. When anything is past the limit of man... It falls in the divine equation. 
within the divine equation, nothing is allowed there that can still be handled naturally. <laughs> so the time is late. Somebody say, God is fast. I didn't hear you. Say it again, God is fast. Now listen, now listen to this. So Abraham and Sarah are past the age of getting children. Because God doesn't deal with things you will easily take the glory. I gave you the story, you have allowed the landlord to come. You have overshowed him three times. And you know your state. You know, if you escape that, it can only be God. It's called committing God. Bringing God into the matter. Can I hear praise the Lord in this house? Now, number three. Number three. Not only was the hour late, not only was the place deserted, number three, the multitude of people that were to be fed was great. And let me ask questions. How much time do you need to get ready a meal that will serve 5,000 men? How long do you need? Number one, okay, you want to fix a meal that will serve 5,000 people and at the same time, you are in the desert where there is no manpower. Maybe we need to get into the ingredients that you have or what you are trying to use to fix the meal. And the question I want to ask, today, if you are given the chance, for those of you that are into the cooking and whatever, into the food industry, if you are invited to serve 5,000 men, apart from children and women, and women are forever more than men in a meeting like that, let's give women 10,000. Let's give children 5,000. So let's say that Jesus fed 20,000 people. If you get a tender today to feed 20,000 people, how long do you need to prepare? Shida ni wa Kristo, wanaomba mungu wajibu. Lakini majibu enye wanatarajia ni majibu enye wanazakubaliana na kwa kili yao. The problem is not that Christians pray. The problem, the Christians pray. Their problem is accepting when God answers. If you are, anybody who does cooking here, anybody here who does anything related to cooking, a hotel or something, a restaurant or something. Now let me ask you a question. If today you win a tender to serve 20,000 people, how long do you think you need to prepare? Yes. How long do you think, how long do we give you to prepare food that can serve 20,000 people? You need a whole day? These people are questioning the kind of industry you are into. Anyway, let's leave that. <laughs> Just the logistics. The logistics alone. Trying to learn what each and every one takes. The companies you need to contract. The suppliers that may need to supply you. Don't forget you may need some trucks and all. The logistics alone. I think this business you should be given three months in advance. To prepare yourself. Then you may need to tell them this and this is what I can be able to do. I may not be able to supply all that. The places, you, the things you may need to rent, the, the, the whatever, calculate your profits and whatever you're going to get. Projecting the risks and all that. So that you can settle that deal. And I believe that is a, a, a supply that if you do, or a tender that if you take, you may rest for a while. Yet we pray that pastor, after the radio program, I sold five bags, I sold... I sold, I sold five loaves of bread, which is very abnormal. I sold five loaves of bread. Pastor, I sold three kilograms of sugar. 
Man of God today, if you see the way children were buying sweets in my shop, it was grace. The Bible is not a book. It's not a storybook. It's a revelation of the glory of God to expand how you see God. Jesus is trying to tell you he doesn't deal with small things. And Jesus is trying to show us how he can do great things in a twinkle of an eye. Yet if Pastor Lo buys a Rolls Royce today, the whole Kenya will call him a Satanist. We don't believe that. How comes even politicians don't drive that? Because believers have read a scripture that says, if a politician has driven it, thou shalt drive it. Believers have a scripture that says, it is paining my heart how we belittle a big God. Look at your life. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, see your life. <laughs> so the question goes, how long will it take you to prepare food that 20,000 people are going to eat? The question goes, approximately how much fish will you need? What of the manpower that makes this kind of cooking a success? Number four. Are you asking the questions? Number four. The loaves were five. The fish were two. The loaves are five. The fish are two. The crowd is 20,000. The place is a desert. The hour is late. Everything speaks impossibility. Because God does not move in possible situations. God moves in impossible situations. The disciples are already trying to run away from the, from the thing. As they, they looked at the crowd. They say, Lord, send them away. So that they can go to the surrounding villages and towns and buy food there. God does not solve things like that. Ah, pana. Vitu zingine lazima tuishi tunazo. Fanya chapa arambia pana pale. Hinono, ah, unaza jengaje kitu kama hiyo. Tulikuambia hui mutu wa yuko bure. Umesikia karambia mefanywa. Hiyo pesa imetoka wapi. Because believers pray, but God answers in a harambe. Believers pray, but God answers in a loan. Believers pray, but their God answers through Shylock. Pastor, Pastor, hata ni mekuja na tithe, Pastor. Vile uliomba tuivi, Pastor. Shylock haka nipigia, haka kubale kunipatia pesa. You and your pastor, you need to know God. Na uyo pastor wako, muna itaji kujua mungu. Then your pastor now prays, Baba, sasa naomba, kulipa hii pesa kwa Shylock, haita msumbua, hauta chukua vitu zake. We ni mungu wa miujiza na majabu. You know what? Your pastor doesn't want to lose you by telling you the truth. It is very dangerous when a man who doesn't know God is leading another one that doesn't know God. Elijah knew God. <laughs> pastor Kenya sai, mshirika Kenya sai, chari, okay, mi mudurgi lemu, I pray for you. Ah, ah. <laughs> it is good to know God. It is good to brag about your knowledge of God. Elijah told the widow with confidence, go and prepare for me. The woman was afraid. If it was a pastor, they would have said, Mama, you are right. You are right. Wisdom is important. It, it is important. I, I'm, I'll be fasting in your house. And the woman could have eaten that last meal and died. And she could have died in the presence of a prophet. The man knew God enough to tell the woman, go and prepare, bring it. I'm going to eat it. And when we are done, the Lord my God, till the day there will be rain, flour will not end. 
and oil will not end. It is good to have a pastor who knows God when you are at a time when you don't know God. Pastor, you are going to pay for it. Pastor, you are going to pay for it. Pastor, you are going to pay for it. Even if you are going So, you are going to pay for it. 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 <laughs> we we angalia hiyo mpango. Alafu kesho Shiloh anakutafuta unanitumia message. Pastor, kumbuka, kumbuka sasa wamekuja. Pastor, ongeza maombi that your man of God is a type of a man of God that adds prayer. Ongeza maombi. Pastor, sasa nikubaya wamesema wanakuja. Pastor, you praying. I don't play those games. <laughs> Either I know God I can give you or I don't know him. Can I close now? Raise your hands and say, Lord, in these three days, I want to see the speedy manifestation of your power in my life. I came to lift the limits of your believing. Ladies and gentlemen, he doesn't answer in Harambe. He doesn't answer through a Shiloh. He doesn't answer through your begging. We serve a God that supplies all our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Can I hear somebody say amen tonight? How fast, how fast can God be? The loaves are five, the fish are two. Now, if you have five loaves and two fish, how many more loaves and fish do you need to feed 20,000 people? Let's do the mathematics. You have five loaves. Let's say one man will share a loaf with his brother. And one man, they'll share one fish into half. One so, two men, one fish, and one loaf of bread. We have 20,000 men if you are to supply that kind of bread, 10,000 loaves of bread. So 20,000 loaves of bread, a loaf of bread is how much? 50 bob. Can you do the calculation? So how much is the bread alone? How many of you are enjoying what I'm teaching now? That if we pray and somebody gives us a thousand, man of God, I've seen miracle man. Man of God, it is true. Hey, nimeona mungu. I want to pray for you at the end of these three days. So that you can see a balance of seven digits in your account. Amen. Believers believe God for a car. And if somebody gives them a second hand car, that is God. If a 22... 2018 sports range rover white is given to him he runs away Say, ah, you don't trust some things hey luminate hey my brother i want to make heaven if i pray for you right now you who is supplying bread na by scale upate order your 10000 loaves of bread so how much money do we need for 10000 loaves half a million Kutoka kwa baiskeli na kreets bili. So mkate pekeni half a million. How much is one fish? Let's talk about a good fish. Good big fish. 800. So we need 10,000 fish. Calculate. 800,000 plus 500,000. So how much? The God we serve talks in millions. And there you are stuck with your 20 bob criticizing a man that is working in millions. Ukisikia tu shuda milioni moja, I told you hello si safi. Unasikia? Umeona? Eh, uliona ule pastor alikuja hapa Sunday? Ulisikia? Unaona vile vitu zake zinaendelea? Wale walimpatia kitu. Believers believe when God moves ni kitu. But when poverty reigns in their life, they are believing God. Pastor, hata gas yetu hatukua na gas. Pastor tuko na mbele wala nyuma. Kibirit, chiribitu kifanya hivi pastor ilikuwa baridi. Lakini vile nitoka kwa revival, nikafanya tu kibiriti hivi, ikawaka. Nikawasha gas pastor. 
pastor hiyo siku stima inapoteanga inarudi that night haikupotea pastor haki tumeona Mungu wako but what about living here now and tomorrow at a time like this you are paying tithe from 10 million that is the god that i know and that is the god that i serve and that is the god that i believe Nani alikuambia mamilioni za ni za Illuminati? The gold is mine. The silver is mine, says the Lord. Yesu anataka kucheza na milioni moja, 1.3 million kimchezo tu hivyo. We serve a God that plays around with millions. Psalm 24 the earth belongs to God. Not Illuminati. that believers should wear coats that look like an airbag devil worshipers are wearing designer clothes and we feel that is right but when a believer drives a sleek range mona hiyo gari wanga na kwa dark because they think the devil is black the devil is not black who told you the devil is not black the devil is not ugly by the way who told you ha msichana tu mwenye hata hajaolewa hana bwana uliona ati alijitokeza ati anataka kujenga rufio ya kanisa that that girl ah, we pray with her on monday prayer he, 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 she prays for 20 minutes and sits down i don't trust her and she has no husband she must be sleeping with somebody ah, are we not praying because you your prayer is answered in poverty according to you the only way somebody can drive a range rover is by sleeping around and since you know it is by sleeping around don't you have what they are using to sleep around with i'm sorry to ask such a tough question but this is the thing now that you know ya kwamba kuna mtu anatumia kitu that believers believe that unaweza tumia kitu and it will work but their god does not work either the bible is fake or the pastor is fake or we are doing something that is fake here 1.3 million yenye umeombea tangu ukiwa 32 years now you are 57 pastor nimekuwa nikililia Mungu anipatie tu hata 1100 sijawahi ona pastor now how fast how fast can god supply this so jesus looks at them and says don't send them away millions are not in the shops they are not in america they are not in australia they are not wherever you think they are here where we are because wherever god is these things are there i prophesy over your life tonight that ladies and gentlemen the things you have thought you need a lot of money to do the speed of god is about to manifest on those things in the name that is above every other name as we close tonight i pray for you that the speed of the almighty god is about to manifest in your life in a way that you have never seen i came to tell you all you need ladies and gentlemen is to play please god please god commit god there is nothing that is too difficult commit god there is no place that is so much of a desert you need to commit god there is no need that is so big you need to commit god there is a speed with which god operates there is a speed with which god works i can't get my sub very well there is a speed with which god functions there is a speed with which god operates the speed of god ladies and gentlemen and how fast can god do it how quick can god do it how rapid can god do it it is not one day it is now it is not in the next 24 hours it is now a god is not planning to heal you oh god is healing your life a god is not planning to deliver you a god is delivering your life oh god is not planning to provide god is providing even right now because now faith is faith is and listen as i close i have learned it is easier for god to do great things 
than it is for him doing small things. Because small things are not in his nature. He's the great I am. Sometimes your struggle is your limited projection of God. You're struggling where God did not put you. Limiting the unlimited God. So there they are now. 1.3 million. Just after a short meeting. No offering is taken. Jesus looks at it. And Jesus says, this is too small in my world that I'm in a hurry to do it. That's why he commanded the crowd to sit down. He didn't beg them to sit down. He didn't ask them to sit down. He used a word of authority because unbelief was so strong in the apostles' lives. So he said, sit down! Because this is too small and I am, I am under pressure to prove to you how big I am where circumstances are against you. The hour is late. The place is deserted. The need is 20,000. The provision is five loaves, two fish. The balance you can calculate. But this tickles me as God. This makes me want to move. Sit down! This tickles me. Since it is running into millions, it is tickling me. You are about to build something very fast because the speed of God is not the speed of a man. I change your mindset. Change your foundation. Change your plan. Change your projection. The speed of God is not the speed of a man. So he said, let them sit down and then be Bring me your limitation. What you think is all that you have, put it in my hands. What you think is all that is in your availability, put it in my hands. Then he took the five loaves. Write this one down very quickly while you are standing. We get out of here. We get out of here. He commanded the multitude. It, let's leave that. Let's do that tomorrow. Time is not on my side. Let's do that tomorrow. Let's do that. Drop your notebook. Let's do that tomorrow. Don't let this just be a preaching to you. Let this thing enter your spirit. Let this thing be real to you. God is fast. Very fast. Man of God, I'm waiting on the Lord. No. You're waiting to believe. Take your five loaves. Take your two fish. Put it in the hands of God. I don't know why believers believe that if they cry to God, God will hear them. And if they are prayed for, God will hear them. The only thing that is hard to believe is that if I give him my two loaves and my five fish, he's conning me. Try to imagine. Jesus said, when everything is against you, give me your labor so that I can give you my rest. Try feeding 5,000 people, men, with five loaves of bread. But Jesus said, Give me your five loaves. Give me your two fish. You can't see my speed while you are holding on to what you think can help you. It's giving time. Get your five loaves, your two fish. I don't know. I have mine. The numbers are on the screen. Those who believe the message up until the place of sit down now you are free to go offline. Because some believe until that place of sit down, and they actually sat down prophetically. 
but you'll have nothing to eat if you don't let go your five loaves. <laughs> 